Hey guys, it's Liv here, bringing you guys a different kind of video on the channel. Today we're going to be finally, I've had these graphics for almost a year, but we're finally going to be doing a team builder video. Um, just for general, uh, I figured this would especially be really good for leading up to the Crown Tundra DLC. So we're going to be doing a team around Xerneas in the Ubers tier. If you guys enjoy, of course, leave a like down below, comment, subscribe if you're new. And with that being said, let's just get right into it. So. Um, we do have a few things that we can actually go off of in terms of a reference. For example, um, we have the current Anything Goes meta, though I will say that is a very, very different format because Anything Goes currently for Nat decks allows stuff like Hidden Powers, um, stuff like that. Um, any sort of the cut moves are allowed. Dynamaxing is allowed on anything, which obviously is going to be very, very different from just a typical Ubers format. Because Ubers, even right now, already has its clause for non-box. Like, pretty much anything that isn't an Uber, for the most part, is allowed to Dynamax, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know the specific ins and outs. I just know that, like, all the boxers are banned from Dynamaxing. So, it is obviously very limited compared to Anything Goes. So, Xerneas cannot Dynamax like it can in Anything Goes. However, that also means Xerneas does not need to be able to beat other, at least, Uber Dynamaxes. Which is very, very helpful for it, to say the least. Not only that... There's not going to be every single Pokemon. This means that a lot of Arceus forms are going to be gone, which especially is great when dealing with Arceus Steel. One of a really good Xerneas checks. However, there's still guaranteed at least Duskmane and should Primal's return, also Primal Groudon. So Xerneas checks will still be there for sure. Ho oh is also a really good one that is also confirmed in the Crown Tundra DLC. So they are definitely not going to be uh, lacking of Xerneas checks, but I think Xerneas is still going to be a very powerful Mon, even without Dynamax, to be honest. Now, Obviously, Duskmane is going to be a pain for it, but otherwise, I think that it has a pretty good merit. And there are some really good Duskmane counters that are going to be in Crown Tundra anyway, so it's really not a huge deal. Um, so I'm going to go over a few different sets. Uh, the first one being, obviously, Geomancy, with Geomancy, Moonblast, Focus Blast, and Thunder. Uh, this is the one that we built our sample team around. Um, I figured Geomancy Xerneas is a really easy set for anyone who does want to use it. Um, it's pretty, pretty brain dead. It should creep for stuff like Adamant and Zygarde if it's max speed, which Zygarde isn't running max speed, spoiler alert. Um, but this is more importantly, than even if your opponent sacks webs, which webs are pretty big, even still. Um, I know they're not like as meta dominant as they were in Gen 7, but they are still definitely not a bad thing by any means on a lot of rosters. Um, but even if webs are up with this current spread, you would be able to outpace any sort of crown Zacian, even if it is Jolly, which Jolly is being run, especially for other Zacian, especially since it does hit obnoxiously hard already. So with this, you could at plus one guarantee creep that. You hit 435, Crown Zacian hits 434. Um, there are some bulkier Geomancy spreads you can obviously grab. I don't personally recommend going with those, at least for the Uber format in particular, until we know more of like what defensive calcs will be necessary. Pure reason being is just the fact that those were all calc for Dynamax Mons and for shit like Mega Ray, which isn't going to be in the format, obviously. So don't really need the extra bulky spreads that like are on smoke on right now just because of the fact that those are also adept as i mentioned for anything goes specifically which is a very different format um this is just for normal ubers just a very basic spread as it really just creeps what you need to um obviously when the format develops a bit more uh taking a bit more out of special attack or even a bit more and speaking going a bit more aggressive could always be helpful for a bulky spread i just didn't want to throw in random numbers that didn't mean anything guaranteed so i figured this is at the very least the numbers do mean something, it's, the 32 is just left over, but I mean, at the very least, it's not like just taking out some of special attack, like let's say going down to like 200 special attack, just to have more to put into bulk, which is obviously not what we want to do, because for just the general entry to the meta spread, we just want to have a general spread that should do, do its job well, and this will guarantee our pace, Crown Zalcine, which I thought, at the very least, even if webs were up, I thought that would be very helpful personally. So, yeah, uh, Xerneas though is definitely a terrifying mod, should get past a lot of counterplay and all that. Um, next up, we're going to go into a set that takes advantage of one of the new moves I got this generation, Player Off. So Xerneas ended up getting Player Off in its moves pool, which actually is really good for it. Uh, Xerneas has as high of an attack stat as it does a special attack stat. So even though it does lack setup, a Bandit set like this, for example, could actually be really nice for it. Because this does help get around a lot of potential immediate Xerneas switch in, such as Spidef ho -Oh, to say the least. Because Ho-Oh could pretty easily switch in on Xerneas anticipating a Geomancy. Uh, Spidef ho -Oh can take a Thunder at plus two and then Troll into help. So it is definitely one of the more reliable checks, to say the least, to Xerneas. However, with Rock Slide, if you catch a Xerneas on the switch in, you guarantee Oko, even if it is maxed as death. So that should be very, very helpful when dealing with potential counterplay. Uh, close Combat will still pressure stuff like Ferrothorn. Playoff is just really spammable anyway. You didn't really need something like Smart Strike, for example, or Megahorn 
just for the fact that as a blanket set, I mean, Playoff hits more against almost everything anyway, just because of Fairy Aura. So Aromatherapy is really nice to stop potential Glare Spam because Zygarde is still obviously going to be really big. Uh, even if Zygarde Complete is gone, I fully do anticipate that at least Zygarde Regular will be around in some way, shape, or form just to Glare Spam, to be honest, because Glare is just a really annoying status for everything. Uh, it's great for hitting stuff like Primal Groudon, even if it's gone, I guess, still stuff like Duskmane, I really, really hate getting glared. Um, so it is still really nice to have that Aromatherapy support, or even then outside of Glare, there's always stuff like Spore potentially from Smeargle, which, well, actually, I don't think Smeargle will be in the game, but just in general, more so just the fact that like status in general is obviously really annoying in Ubers. Um, even outside of those, for mods that we are knowing confirmed are in the game, stuff like Pharaoh, I believe, gets T-Wave. I know that Klefki runs T-Wave here and there. Uh, Gl Grimstall, I'm pretty sure, also gets T-Wave. So stuff like that, obviously, that can T-Wave your team around Therapy is still really nice support for. Most likely not clicking in anyway. You could easily throw Defog on, however, uh, mainly just went with Aroma Therapy because there are some really common Zerm partners, such as Ho-Oh, as I mentioned earlier, that pretty freely run Defog with boots anyway. So there's really no reason to run Defog over Aroma Therapy, in my opinion. So, yeah, we have uh, Ben and Zernius here. I think this will be a really nice anti-meta spread, personally. Now, obviously, I think this is definitely one that you could play around with going maybe Adamant or Jolly. However, I went with Jolly just because of the fact that you're running Ben anyway. Uh, I don't really think that there's a reason to run Adamant personally when this could potentially outpace stuff like any sort of plus attack nature Xerneas's or plus special attack nature Xerneas's or even just stuff like a Veltal, which is obviously a really annoying Mon and will always be a really annoying Mon in the meta. So just stuff like that. I figured that was really helpful for. Also, this will outpace stuff like Lunala, even if it is timid. So unless it's like a Scarf Lunala, you can guarantee it pace that. Playoffs should do a ton, especially if, as long as you break its Shadow Shield, it should do a ton. So yeah, I figured this was a really good set though. Next up, we have the Specs Xerneas. Um, this is pretty much the same set that people would run on Specs Xerneas last gen. However, this takes advantage of another new move that Xerneas got this generation, being Draining Kiss. So I figured that we potentially take off Aromatherapy on this particular Xerneas just to give Xerneas a way to get HP back, should it just need to be around for a bit of a long game and stuff just be weakened a bit. Um, this helps especially if Xerneas let's say gets toxic and you would just lock in Draining Kiss just recover some stuff back late game and be able to pick off a team a bit easier. Uh, obviously, Moonblast will probably be the primary fairy stab. Focus Blast is great for Fairy Thorn. Thunder, as I mentioned, great for Ho-Oh, should 2 a KO still. But, uh, but I figure Draining Kiss just fit better at least than Aromatherapy in my opinion. Though you could pretty easily just sub that out for Aromatherapy, Toxic, Defog, Endeavor, etc. There are a ton of things you could sub out that for. And all those moves besides Draining Kiss fit just as easily on the Bandit spread or, as we'll get into in a bit, the Scarf spread. Uh, Xerneas really just needs a couple moves usually on every single set being the fairy move and then the coverage. So I figured the Draining Kiss though could be a cool option here. Uh, obviously though, whatever you think fits best for your draft or for your team, I should say, because I'm so used to talking about draft, uh, but whatever fits best in your team obviously is what's best for that fourth slot. I just personally thought that as a blanket option, Draining Kiss would be a nice option to highlight because it is a newer option and people might overlook it just because of the fact they might not realize that it gets it. Uh, finally, we have the Scarf Xerneas. Quite literally the same as the Specs one, except for this one opts for Modest, just because it is Scarfed. Uh, realistically, a Veltal will never run a Scarf spread that is hitting Timid or Jolly, so I figure that at the very least, running just a Modest set made sense here. Uh, it should still creep everything it needs to. Realistically, all the Mons that would be between this aren't going to really be running Scarf, besides maybe Lunala, that might be a big one, and then otherwise maybe like, maybe Kiram's, but I'm pretty sure Kiram's are only running Boost right now anyway. Um... And even then, I mean, realistically, you could always just run Timid if you're really that worried. But I think that Modest just fits better on a Scarf Cernius. Uh, Pretty simple, just, again, coverage to hit what it needs to. Rob Therapy just I chose for this fourth move just because of the fact that, unlike with Specs, you're not going to be breaking as well with Dranicus. Whereas with Specs, at the very least, Dranicus could probably start doing actual substantial damage. Or substantial damage, quote unquote. But, um, but yeah, no, I figured that Aromatherapy just made sense for a Scarf set, especially because it can outpace and potentially go for Aromatherapy before, if you do need Sax Xerneas to allow something else to sweep. So I thought that might be helpful, though again, there are a ton of options Xerneas gets. Xerneas' fourth move pool, it's that, there. Xerneas' space for a fourth move pool is really good. Hell, you can even go for a mixed spread and not for Rock Slide if you really wanted. Definitely a viable option in my opinion, just to help with Ho-Oh Luring. Um, I would, in that case though, change Thunder for Grass Knot, just because that'll be a that'll be able to hit stuff like Pedon as well, just a bit better. Um, though at the very least, Focus Blast is still there, however, accuracy is the thing. Thunder, I would still, Thunder still definitely does work though, because it will still handle stuff like Kyogre, for example, and also Ho-Oh, but just Rockstead, as I mentioned though, could be a bit better if you wanted to go with the fourth move that was not Aromatherapy. 
So yeah, you do definitely have options though. Uh, there's tons of options you have for coverage on Xerneas. You could even go for a mixed star spread that's more mixed than just rock slide. However, wasn't really sure on what particular would be best for that, so I didn't want to touch that. And I figured that the special scarf spread is just a pretty, pretty easy spread to make work. Uh, personally, one of my favorites besides Z Geomancy, but that's obviously not a thing anymore. Um, so now that we've discussed over potential spreads for Xerneas, I would like to go into my sample team for Xerneas. Uh, now, this team will be linked in the description below, along with all the sample spreads mentioned in this video. First up, we start with Geomancy Xerneas. As I mentioned, uh, Geomancy Xerneas will be creeping stuff like uh, Saucy and Crown, even if webs drop. That also means it will creep stuff that is below one, uh, I believe it's below 80 speed scarfed. I know obviously that the, it's a bit higher than that, but I just can't think of the exact number. I know it will obviously creep 80 scarfers though, so I'm just going to mention that. Uh, really, really solid coverage though, just in general. Moonblast, Focus Blast, Thunder hits pretty much everything in the meta. Best checks are like Spinef, Ho Oh, uh, Bulky Pedon, Dusk Main obviously is a really good check, which is what the team is built around. As you can see, uh, next mod that we have in tandem with this is Ho Oh. A uh, Ho-Oh, pretty just standard spread. I just took the standard anything goes spread for Ho-Oh just because it realistically checks everything it needs to being stuff such as, um, actually I'm really blanking hard. I know it checks like Xerneas at the very least with the spread though. And I figured that was the important thing as well to check opposing Xerneas because Xerneas do run a lot of coverage options and obviously like Focus Blast could kill Ferrothorn. Uh, Moonblast kills a lot of other mons in format. However, this will guarantee be able to whirlwind it out. So I figured that was very important. Uh, Toxic's really just spammable against a pretty much everything in the format, to be honest. If it's not a steel type, Toxics are great for it. Like opposing oh ohs Kyogre, Zygarde even, not a bad mon to Toxic, unless it's a rest Zygarde, but that's another issue. Um, regardless, so Sacred Fire also just really spamble. Um, so yeah, Defog is great because it has boots and it can defog potential spikes for stuff like Zygarde and Zacian for later on, or even just webs. So Ho is definitely the best defogger right now, for sure. Um, this also can soft check. I believe it's soft checks, not just hard counters versus Zacian. If it doesn't have wild charge, it hard counters at the very least, because I'm almost certain it lacks a rock move, though I'd have to double check on that. I know the very least they're on wild charge for Ho. So uh, I know it at least checks that. I'm pretty sure it hard counters though. Um, but yeah, no, this mod's really good though. Ho is definitely one of the best mods and boots only help. Regen, really, really broken as well for an ability. Um, but yeah, no, defensive Ho is just a really solid partner with Xerneas in my opinion. I've done a ton of anything goes laddings with these two and they kind of carry. Now obviously Xerneas carries because it can quite literally just max and destroy teams. But even still, I was actually doing some laddering with this particular team. And I found that these two definitely support each other really well. Uh, even trying to just avoid maxing with Xerneas altogether just so that I can get a more accurate feel for playing in actual Ubers. And I definitely did notice that it was at least a really, really easy to just win games with these two mods in tandem. Uh, third mod that made that really easy was Primal Kyogre. Uh, this is Rest Talk Primal Kyogre. Just max his death. This is a really, really good check for stuff like Dusk Main, for example, that could obviously run edge for Ho Oh potentially if it is a more offensive Dusk Main. Which a more offensive Dusk Main with like Weeps Poly Policy Autonomize could definitely be a bit of an issue. However, with Fizz Death Kyogre, we can definitely check that really easily. Uh, even if Primals aren't allowed back, I did run Calcs, and even versus a plus attack nature Dusk Main at plus two, we could still actually take a Photon with this. So you could always go for a Skull Burn if necessary. However, there are other checks as well in the team, so should Primal Kyogre not be back, it's not a huge deal, though I do still think Arrest Talk spread will fit. Uh, you can always opt for a Scarf Kyogre as well. I just think that when checking Dusk Main, this is probably a better option. Um, Rest Talk with Toxic, just really spammable against pretty much everything. Uh, also, it's really, really good to take hits from Primal Groudon, for example, and then actually switch it on those. Though again, we have other options as well, so it's not a huge miss if you want to go for a Scarf spread. It does still definitely work. Uh, with the anticipation for Primal Kyogre hopefully being back in though I decided that Rest Talk would just be slightly better but on regular Kyogre either are really good options to be honest. Uh, next up we have pretty much a mandatory monolith here at this point it just breaks everything so well. I opted for a sub spread I have personally been a huge fan of sub spread I don't even really like SD that much I know it's really good I just am not a fan of it I think that sub gets a lot more benefits such as if you're able to sub on something and pick it off such as Lugia for example which literally cannot touch you uh, then you stop Ditto from being able to come in as freely because Ditto, obviously, if it is hard switching out, will have to risk potentially taking a Behemoth Bash, which it's not going to want to do. Uh, sub though does help a lot because if Ditto, it stops Ditto from being able to come in at all, at least if you have the sub up. And it also just helps you get a free hit off and stuff. And with Zacian especially, just because of Intrepid Sword, you're able to do half to pretty much everything not named Primal Crown on. 
So it is definitely really good. Uh, Wild Charge is great for Ho Oh. Behemoth with Bash is great for stuff like Xerneas. Uh, Close Combat's great for stuff like Ferrothorn. They hit pretty well just in general in the meta. Wild Charge obviously can also hit Kyogre, for example. This spread does miss out on Zakard, but realistically, we have a Xerneas anyway, and we have a ton of Toxic Mons, so it's really not going to be a huge deal. Even if it is Rest Talk, Xerneas sets up on that pretty freely, or just Moon Blast, to be honest, it doesn't even really need to set up. Um, we also do have Spikes on the team that can at least pressure Zygarde from coming in as freely on this, so it's really not a huge miss. And even then, the first switch into Zacian will never be Zygarde. It's always going to be something like Ko-Oh, Ferrothorn, uh, stuff like that, that isn't going to be player off to death. So, yeah, there is that as well. I do think that the Zacian is just really brain dead Mon. You're kind of missing out by not having it on the team, and I don't even know why it's allowed in Uber still at this point, to be honest. I know that Quag's a really good check, but there's really not a lot of solid counterplay. Even when Crown Tundra drops, there just won't be a lot. Um, it's just, it's such a free Mon. Next up on the team, we have uh, Rest Haze Glare Thousand Arrow Zygarde. Uh, now, I'll be honest, uh, similar to how I just grabbed an Anything Ghost spread that I've been using, and this is a really, really fun spread to use personally. A really, really great check to just so much in the meta. Pretty much any physical offensive threat, this can check. If you max as well, you can actually take hits from Zacian, if I'm not mistaken. I would have to double check on the Calyx, but I'm almost certain this could take a uh, Zacian hit with max. Um, Zygarde, defensive, we hit 208. Um, yeah, okay, so even without max, actually, um, oh, you know what, that's Zacian non-complete, I was gonna say. That did wait. Okay, so yeah, it's literally a roll versus, uh, Zacian crowned, only if it's adamant. If it's jolly, it's guaranteed live with this investment. And obviously, if you max, it's only gonna take it better. And max quake will do so much damage. It does 90, uh, 76 to 90 versus, with no attack, of course, versus any sort of Zacian with no bulk. Which they're not running bulk, they need the speed in the offense. So this is definitely a really good spread. Uh, Haze is really good, just especially for the Dynamax meta, though I do still think it's really good for handling other Zygarde's and any sort of offensive Groudon or, uh, bleh. for some reason I was thinking Zamazenta. For any sort of offensive Groudon or any offensive Duskmane, Haze is also really, really good for. And Glare especially just being able to paralyze Groudon and then just start 1v1ing it is one of the most satisfying things in the world. So I do truly think that this Zygarde will still be very prevalent in Anything Goes or even in just normal Ubers once Isle of Arm or once Crown Hunter drops. So I do think this is definitely a set worth running on this team. And finally, I opted for Ferrothorn. Now there are a ton of spikers you could use here. Klefki is another great one, for example. However, I personally am just a huge fan of Ferrothorn. Ferrothorn's a really big convert mon, to be honest, for me. I'm not huge on Klefki as a mon. Uh, Leech Seed also is really, really good for helping check Primal Kyogre because this team is definitely a fairly bit weak to Primal Kyogre, to say the least. Though, to be fair, Kyogre is definitely just one of those mons that will dent a team that doesn't have Ferrothorn pretty much. Um, otherwise, your counterplay is like getting up Desolate Land and hoping that you can just get around Kyogre because it won't have uh, whatever the Primordial Sea is up. So it's definitely a really good mon. Uh, spikes are huge, in my opinion. Even with Boots, a lot of Boots mons are just flying tips anyway. So spikes, in my opinion, do help a lot with stuff like Magearna, which can obviously be annoying for Xerneas as well. Uh, stuff for Zygarde, Zacian, etc. All those sort of mons. Primal Ground them too. Leech Seed support is obviously really good, especially to help stuff like Z Zamazenta, or not Zamazenta, Zacian, uh, Zygarde, Xerneas, etc. All keep their HP healthy that would otherwise lack recovery. Knockoff is just good for getting rid of boots, to be honest. If Ho-Oh is ever hard in on Pharaoh, it risks losing boots, which is very, very bad for Ho-Oh. Now, while we don't have rocks, it still is just good in general to knock off any sort of item. Like, for example, we can maybe knock off Leftovers and Zygarde, uh, stuff like that. So it is still a really nice mod to move to have, though I highly consider changing knockoff to Power Whip. I think it's not a bad option by any means. Also, Gyro Ball could work, especially in a non-Dynamax format. Gyro Ball might be a very worthwhile option investing in for Xerneas. However, I think knockoff is way too invaluable, personally. So I get that. Uh, Protect is obviously really, really good just for Leech Seed stalling stuff. Uh, I've had so many times where Toxic something with like Kyogre or with Ho-Oh, such as Mega Ray, and I'll harden to this on the Dragon Ascent turn, have them drop the defenses, they'll take in that Iron Barb ship plus Toxic, which by that point will have been two turns of Toxic because the initial turn plus the second turn. Then I click Protect, it's now taking another 18%, and then Contact plus Toxic, it's going to be like an extra 30 something percent at that point. So it is, it, it's really, really nice to rack up damage on stuff like Ray, which even if it isn't Mega Ray, Ray will still be a prominent mod. I can safely say that. Ray will always be a mod that will just do stuff in Ubers. So even against regular Rayquaza and Ubers, this set will definitely help a lot. 
as long as Ray doesn't click V-Create on you, which if it does, it would have to click it hard in anyway, because otherwise you could just sack regardless, because you'll take it on Dragon Ascent turn. So it is still nice for checking Ray as well, in my opinion. Um, there is definitely a lot of merit to Ferrothorn outside of that, but I won't get into that, just because it should be pretty obvious when you use the team. And I've already delved into Ferrothorn a ton, but I do think it's definitely the best spiker in the tier. And it is also a really, really nice spawn to patch up this team. Uh, this team in general, though, I think is going to be really, really solid in the format. Uh, obviously... And do you guys want to see me use this team on launch? Let me know down below. I'm going to be doing these for a few other mods as well. So let me know if what teams you guys want me to use, what teams you don't want me to use, what mods you want me to build around in the next video. And until then, I'll see you guys later. If you guys enjoyed, leave a like down below, comment, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys later. Peace out.